This is the Music History Today podcast for September 24th. On today's show, it's a big music release day for classics and popular albums from Nirvana, A Tribe Called Quest, The Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Brian Adams. First up, though, on this date in 1942, Glenn Miller performed on the radio for the final time. In 1953, singer Dick Hames married actress Rita Hayworth. In 1954, Sarah Vaughn recorded the song Make Yourself Comfortable. In 1955, Judy Garland performed on television for the first time. In 1957, the Alan Freed rock and roll movie Mr. Rock and Roll premiered. In 1958, the Platters recorded their song Smoke Gets in Your Eyes. In 1964, the Supremes performed on the Steve Allen TV show, becoming their first national TV appearance. In 1964, Ringo Starr formed the Bricky Building Company Limited, a construction company that was co-owned by builder Barry Patience. In 1967, the Beatles filmed the dance scene for the movie The Magical Mystery Tour. In 1968, the musical TV show That's Life premiered. In 1974, James Brown played his famous concert in Zaire, Africa. In 1988, Graham Parker started his solo acoustic tour. In 1995, Gloria Estefan and her husband Emilio were involved in a boating accident when the boat that they were on collided with a jet ski, killing the jet skier. In 1998, the punk rock movie SLC Punk was released. In 2005, John Cusimano of The Cringe married TV food personality Rachel Ray. In 2009, Leonard Cohen held a concert in Tel Aviv, Israel that became very controversial due to Middle Eastern politics, of course. In 2010, the movie The Social Network, co-starring Justin Timberlake as Napster founder Sean Parker, premiered. The film score, which was done by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross of Nine Inch Nails, won the Academy Award for Best Film Score. In 2012, Mark McGrath of Sugar Ray married his wife, Karen Kingsland. In 2023, Taylor Swift went to a Kansas City Chiefs football game. The broadcast showed Taylor Swift in the stands rooting for her new boyfriend, Chiefs player Travis Kelsey, so much that the ratings and Chiefs jersey sales both went up. After that, every Chiefs game became the Taylor Swift show, with a football game interrupting shots of Taylor Swift. All right, that last part isn't true, but it sure felt like it the way they were doing it all. My goodness. Anyway, in classical music, in 1906, the operetta The Red Mill opened on Broadway, and in 2019, opera star Placido Domingo ended his association with the New York Metropolitan Opera after accusations of sexual misbehavior were made against him. In theater, in 1894, the musical Adonis premiered on Broadway. In 1928, the musical Elmer the Great premiered. And in 1976, the musical O Calcutta started a run of 5,959 performances on Broadway. In award ceremonies that were held on September 24th, in 1997, Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood were the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards. And in 2003, Gordon Lightfoot was inducted into the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame. Albums that were released in the UK on September 24th include in 1965 when the Rolling Stones released Out of Our Heads, in 1984 Depeche Mode released Some Great Reward, and in 1996 Elton John released Love Songs. Meanwhile, in America, in 1969, Laura Nero released New York Tenderberry. In 1971, T-Rex released Electric Warrior. In 1973, Roy Orbison released Milestones. In 1975, Rush released Caress of Steel. In 1977, Motorhead released their self-titled album. In 1979, The Eagles released The Long Run. In 1981, Cool and the Gang released Something Special. In 1984, The Honey Drippers released Honey Drippers Volume 1 and David Bowie released Tonight. In 1989, Spandau Ballet released Heart Like a Wheel. In 1990, Megadeth released Rust in Peace. Simple Minds released Themes Volume 1 March 79 to April 82. ACDC released The Razor's Edge. 
and Badfinger released Day After Day Live. In 1991, on one day, Nirvana released Nevermind, A Tribe Called Quest released The Low End Theory, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers released Blood Sugar Sex Magic, and Brian Adams released Waking Up the Neighbors. Those four albums are considered either A, classics, in the first three's case, or B, an extremely popular album in the 1990s. That would be the Brian Adams one. Meanwhile, on that exact same day that those classics of 90s music were released, The Cult released Ceremony, Kid and Play released Face the Nation, John Prine released The Missing Years, The Thompson Twins released Queer, Little Feet released Shake Me Up, and James Taylor released New Moonshine. In 1993, Led Zeppelin released the complete studio recordings. In 1996, Weezer released Pinkerton. Sheryl Crow released her self-titled album. Zampano released Going Through Changes. And Frank Zappa released Lather. In 1998, Frank Zappa was added again, this time releasing Mystery Disc. In 2002, Elvis Presley released Elvis 30 Number One Hits. Linda Ronstant released The Very Best of Linda Ronstant. Beck released Sea Change. Jesse Colin Young released Songs for Christmas. Blue Oyster Cult released A Long Day's Night. Jackson Brown released Naked Ride Home. Steve Earle released Jerusalem. And Peter Gabriel released Up. In 2007, New Order released their iTunes original series. And PJ Harvey released White Chalk. In 2009, Foreigner released Can't Slow Down. In 2010, Ace of Base released The Golden Ratio. In 2013, Cher released Closer to the Truth. Government Mule released Shout. The I'll Scratch Yours compilation came out. And Metallica released Metallica Through the Never. Singles that were released in the UK on September 24th include in 1965 when Gary Lewis and the Playboys released Everybody Loves a Clown. In 1982, Peter Gabriel released Shock the Monkey. And in 1984, Julian Lennon released Too Late for Goodbyes. Meanwhile, in America, in 1957, Elvis Presley did a twofer. He released Jailhouse Rock and Treat Me Nice. In 1968, Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell released Keep On Loving Me Honey. In 1970, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles released Tears of a Clown. In 1978, Donna Summer released MacArthur Park. In 1982, Prince released his classic 1999. In 1984, Paul McCartney released No More Lonely Nights. In 1996, the song That Thing You Do from the movie of the same name was released and became a modest hit. In 2007, Bob Dylan released Most Likely You Go Your Way and I'll Go Mine. In 2012, Wiz Khalifa released Remember You, and in 2014, Ed Sheeran released Thinking Out Loud. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on September 24th include Linda McCartney of Wings, Mel Taylor of The Ventures, Marty Cintron of No Mercy, Muppet Master and singer of the hit songs Rubber Ducky and The Rainbow Connection, Mr. Jim Henson. Singer and actor Anthony Newley, Cedric Dent of Take Six, Clown Cran of Slipknot, Sean McNabb of Quiet Riot, Jerry Donahue of Fairport Convention, Phyllis Jiggs Albutt and her sister Barbara Bibbs Albutt of The Angels. However, not on the exact same day. Barbara is two years older. Peter Salisbury of The Verve also celebrates a birthday that day, as well as Jerry Marsden of Jerry and the Pacemakers, singer Mike Berry, Mark Sandman of Morphine, Dennis D'Amour of Voivode, 
rapper Josh A, rapper Token, rapper Trinidad James, singer Tayil, singer Alina Baraz, songwriter Carl Sigmund, jazz guitarist Bill Connors, vibraphonist Jay Hoggard, country music singer-songwriter Marty Mitchell, rapper Queen Penn, trombonist Wayne Henderson, clarinetist John Carter, trumpet player Theodore Navarro, Latin jazz percussionist Jack Costanza, Bassist Jimmy Butts, clarinetist Horace Winter, jazz singer and actor Herbert Jeffries, and saxophonist and cornet player Isidore Barberin. Artists who unfortunately passed away on September 24th include composer Manuel Mendez, who passed away in 1605 at the age of 58. Composer Duarte Lobo passed away in 1646 at the age of 81. Composer William Walker passed away in 1875 at the age of 66. Composer Patrick Gilmore passed away in 1892 at the age of 62. Composer Rudolf Dellinger passed away in 1910 at the age of 53. Composer Edwin H. Lamar passed away in 1934 at the age of 69. Composer Harry Wilson passed away in 1968 at the age of 67. Singer and dancer Ruth Edding of the Ziegfeld Follies passed away in 1978 at the age of 80. Singer Isabel Bailey passed away in 1983 at the age of 88. Folk singer Peter Bellamy passed away from mental health issues in 1991 at the age of 47. Neo-Nazi musician Ian Stewart Donaldson of the far-right band Screwdriver passed away in a car accident in 1993 at the age of 36. Singer and actor Zeki Murin passed away from heart issues in 1996 at the age of 64. Singer Larry Hall passed away in 1997 at the age of 57. Organist Torsten Nilsson passed away in 1999 at the age of 79. Singer-songwriter Tim Rose passed away in 2002 at the age of 62. Singer Rosalie Allen passed away in 2003 at the age of 99. Singer Thomas Stewart passed away in 2006 at the age of 78. Singer Vic Vukov passed away in 2008 at the age of 72. George Hilliard of The Times passed away in 2014 at the age of 73. That was not to be confused with Morris Day and The Time. George Hilliard was actually in the group that spelled it T-Y-M-E-S. Accordionist and singer Buckwheat Zydeco passed away from cancer in 2016 at the age of 68. Music producer Jack Good passed away in 2017 at the age of 86. And jazz saxophonist Pharaoh Sanders passed away in 2022 at the age of 81. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is September 25th, when in 1980, the world lost John Bonham of Led Zeppelin. <laughs> 